Alrighty, this is where we really delve into hard style territory. We've got a simple beat. Let's make it a painful simple beat. You can use hard style kick samples that you download from the internet or whatever, but that's no fun. I'm going to show you how to make your own, like a violent raving version of Delia Smith. So we're going to make a combinator, right click, other combinator, a mixer, six to two is fine. And we're going to start with our home slice Thor. Now the ideal with a hard style kick that I found is to layer up a bunch of horrific tones until they start to sound even more horrific. So the first tones we're going to get are from a wavetable. I explain wavetables in depth in this Skrillex bass tutorial if you're interested, but I'm going to go straight into using them at this point. So first I'm going to initialize this patch, open it up so we can see what's going on, get rid of this filter, and change the sustain in the amp envelope to full so we don't lose any volume over time. Also, I'll add in some notes. Boom, there we go. And let's name it while we're here. HS Kick. In fact, let's make it navel. Perfect. Well, not so much, but let's make two wavetable oscillators. Both down a few octaves and run them both through. Then it's just a case of finding some tones that you like. Now I enjoyed Mix Waves 1. I'll just take this one to 5 eighths of the way around. I'll show you these individually in a second. And then we're going to have Didgeridoo as well. Around 3 eighths of the way around. Turns out Australian natives knew what it takes to make a good hard style kick well before the Netherlands. Now for the part that will shape this into a kick, because it's not exactly what we want at the moment, just like a gritty bass. And I'll solo this out so we can really hear it. Now move everything in this filter envelope down here to zero, except for the decay, which we're gonna bring down to around there, 250 milliseconds. Now we won't be using it on the filter, since we got rid of the filter, you'd be a silly billy if you tried to do that. And now in the modulation bus routing section, we're going to root, 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 the filter envelope, so filter E and V, to oscillator 1 pitch, and also oscillator 2 pitch, by about 80 each. Now listen to what happens as I bring this in. You can really hear the kick starting to form there. Now play around with the decay amount, and the amount here. You might want to play around until you get rid of that high-pitched sound because it's starting to sound like an oddly rhythmical laser war, which I suppose you could take and call it a new genre since so many genres are apparently defined by the tone of the kick drum. And I don't think anyone's got laserstyle.com, though I haven't checked. Anyway, so yeah, for hard style, we just want to avoid that kind of sound. All the hard style fans will be all, oh, what's with your kick? It sounds gay. And while I'm not one to judge the heterosexuality of your bass drum, they are apparently. Know your audience. Anyway. Back down it comes, and next up we're going to add an EQ and really shape the sound. So a low shelf, bring that right down to about 40 hertz, something like that, and bring it up, about 11 decibels, and really bring up that Q so it's a nice prominent boost for a really beefy low end. Parameter 1 we're going to take up quite considerably. widen it a little bit, just to get some of that clangy mid-range. And then we're going to have a little bit of high end as well, just slightly. Turning it from this into this. And again, play around with the EQing to get the sound you want. You can really change it depending on where that mid-range is particularly. Next, we're going to make a spider audio merger and splitter. This will allow us to do some parallel processing, splitting the signal and applying several different types of effects to it, then merging them back together in the mixer up here so it sounds thicker, but still maintains its original tone. So we're going to root one output from this. We're going to take, instead of going straight to the mixer, we're going to take this here and take one output from the audio merger and splitter into the mixer. So we have the original powerful tone, and then we're just going to mangle this tone with distortion through another signal chain. 
So we're going to run it into a screen for first of all. Let's get rid of this. If you hold shift when you create it, it doesn't link up, but for some reason my screen capture software doesn't allow me to do that, which is quite frustrating, but you can. And then we're going to root out from one of the channels in the Spider Audio Merger and Splitter to the Scream 4 and bring that into the mixer. Let's hide the programmer so we can see a bit more clearly. And if we solo it out so you can hear just the Scream 4 tone for now, we're going to turn it to tube mode. Maybe bring up that damage control a little bit and play with P1 and P2 until you're happy. I'm happy. Now this kind of emulates a tube amp distortion. Turn the resonance and scale up to full here in the body section. Making it really piercing. And then turn it to the A body type. Which I like, it's kind of gritty. And then the two together. Starting to build up. Next we're going to root another one from the spider splitter into an envelope controlled filter on band pass mode. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did before and root from the spider audio splitter into the mixer. Now if we solo that out, we can hear it cuts off the low and high ends, leaving us with a narrow band of frequencies to process so we can really focus on getting more tonality around a certain area. Now this is a great technique for making thicker sounds when parallel processing. Let's bring the resonance up and bring the frequency up as well. Now you can hear there's a really piercing tone there right now. And we're going to distort this with another Scream 4. This time on modulate mode. Bring that damage control down maybe a little bit. And maybe a bit less modulation going on. Bring that resonance on full. And one with a scale and turn it to type E. So as you can hear, that bandpass really gives it a much clearer tone, even though it's still nice and disgustingly distorted. Now if at this point you're wondering, how do you learn which parameters to change? This is so ridiculously specific. Well relax, I don't have an exact distortion tone in mind that I somehow know exactly how to aim for. This is just a case of playing around with distortion settings and using some of these techniques that I've just taught you, such as parallel compression, EQing and bandpass filtering stuff, until it starts to sound cool. While there is obviously some stuff to learn, a large part of this process is about having fun and being lucky with the settings you stumble upon. So next, we're going to brighten up the top a bit with an EQ boost, around 7 kilohertz. Yeah, by about that, 8 decibels-ish. And then take a listen to all three together. Now that's nice. A bit mid-heavy, we'll sort that soon, but first it still needs thickening. It has a sweet tone, but not much punchiness or power to it. Like when a five-year-old girl attempts to engage you in a fist fight. Now let's add that power with a maelstrom for some variety. Right click, instruments, maelstrom. Let's initialize it. And the wavetables in here are great. After looking through them, I opted for this uh, square times four for one of them. And didgeridoo for the second, because I just love those aboriginal indigenous people's music tastes. So octave down to on the square, just uh, solo this out so we can hear it specifically. And turn off all the filters, not that it was doing anything anyway, just as a precaution. So now for the pitch part, take a mod A here to this curve. which is curve number nine, this exponential decrease on one shot mode. So it only triggers the once and then turn the rate to around 80, which defines how fast the kick drum hits and then turn that pitch to full. Again, play with these parameters to adjust the punchiness to your liking. Quite like it with zero motion actually. So I think I'll leave it like that. The motion just means movement through that wavetable, so... Makes it more interesting, but not quite as strong and powerful, which is what we're looking for in this case. And now we're going to add a Scream 4, because we're not sick of them yet. 
on tape mode. Just for a bit of extra body and leave that damage control where it is. And maybe something like that. Let's get rid of the cut. This is not really doing anything. And the body, let's go to full resonance, zero scale, full auto, and type D. Now that really is bassy. Remember, we've got all the high-pitched tones here, so we just need a nice punchy undertone right now. And lastly, for this final layer, we're going to add an EQ. With parameter 1, parameter 1 on 170 hertz. little bit extra punchiness. Notice we're focusing on a different frequency here than the wave we had before. We're attempting to fill up a large amount of the spectrum with different sounds, so it's a big wall of sound. Also, we're going to boost. From 1K. Yeah, by about that, 12 decibels. Maybe a little bit wider. Gives a nice knock to it. All together now. Sweet. Now we can mix it a bit, though. Kind of like where it was sitting before, though it is ridiculously over the top. In terms of volume, we're going to sort that out. But before that, we're going to add an EQ to the whole thing to really shape the sound. So EQ. Let's drag this up. Remember, you want it not out of the aux. You want it out of the master out into the EQ because we want to process everything in series, not in parallel. Now I'm going to make this really deep and powerful by bringing up the low end. About four decibels. Let's bring on that Q too. Let's cut those mids. And we're going to boost the highs a touch at 4 decibels. Again, we're going to close the wide cue. This is all to taste though. Maybe you prefer the mid-heavy sound, but I kind of like these scooped mids after I played with it a bit. It really gives a clarity that squelchy mid-heavy sounds tend to lack, in my opinion. So, before this EQing... And that one. And that gives plenty of space in the middle of the sound for us to sit all the other elements of the mix. Okay, so that was a rigmarole, but there we have it. I'd advise bringing it down in the mixer a bit. Because it is ridiculously loud. But there we have it. A kick more distorted and violent than Hitler's take on Nietzsche's ideas. Now take a listen with the other kick. So just on its own. See how that's much punchier? And notice here in the notes as well, they follow exactly with the other kick, even down to that last little triplet bounce. And as you can see, I've pitched the kick as well to give us the starting point for a melody from the F sharp down to the D, then the E, and back up. A nice progression that we can use to create musical tension in conjunction with the lead synth. And you'll often find that hardstyle, being a utilitarian genre, uses the kick drum as the bass synth. However, hardstyle does occasionally use bass synths as well and has quite a specific one. And I'll be showing you how to make that in day two. So hit like and favorite if you enjoyed this video, then join me there so we can add this sweet hardstyle bass to our track.